Hi everyone, welcome. We're checking in on a couple of my worm bins today. that are now 104 days of age and today's feeding, according to my records, is their 10th feeding. And it's been 10 days since we last checked in on these guys. The previous feeding was, as far as I remember, not too big and consisted mainly of stuff that I assumed would go pretty quickly. So my guess is that they're probably due for a feeding. I came equipped with some replacement top covering newspaper. I often like to place top covering newspaper out like this, but we we prepared the last feeding in such a way that this top covering newspaper got sprinkled with some some of my worm chow, causing a good bit of worm traffic onto the paper, resulting in it getting chewed up. You can even see the shape in which the worm chow had been applied. It was in a diagonal stripe going across the, the paper. So this paper will simply get reused down in the feeding zone as supplementary bedding. And what I have for them is replacement top covering. I've also got replacement feeding zone indicators. And I usually just use coffee filters as feeding zone indicators. This has also been pretty heavily worked. It would appear that we either didn't have one over here or maybe it just got stuck to the paper and was lifted off when we removed the top covering. Yeah, I'm looking over on the side now and I could see the, uh, the feeding zone indicator that had been in here was also pretty heavily worked down. So I've got a replacement for that as well. I've got a couple coffee. I've got I've got no coffee for them today, but I've got a couple replacement coffee filters, um, as well as some pear and some watermelon rind for them. So they should really enjoy that feeding. Last time we also left a good bit of leafy material sprinkled sprinkled out across the top of each of these systems, as sort of a top dressing, which I used to do once in a while, but ever since I started shredding paper. And using that as my primary source of bedding, my supply of leaves outside has been getting a little bit neglected. So last time we decided we'd come in here with my leaf supply and not only provide this, both of these systems with a top dressing of leaves, but we also used leaves as the main bedding for the foundation of the last feeding. So besides those reused top covering newspaper bits and um, coffee filters. I've also got, um, you might have noticed in the tray with the food, was some uh, paper towels, a couple soiled paper towels that need to get composted. So we'll deposit that stuff down into the feeding zone before we apply today's feeding. The last time we came in here, this half of a corn cob was still a whole corn cob that we broke in half to see if perhaps breaking it in half helps aid in its breakdown process. So that wasn't really much of a surprise to bump into that as leftovers from the last feeding because that's the, just the sort of thing that's going to take a while to break down. Here too is some leftover of banana peel. If I'm not mistaken, banana peel was also part of the last feeding and it too is something that might take a little while sometimes to break down, especially the stem. The stem is very fibrous and tough, almost like a stick. The rest of the banana peel usually goes fairly quickly but the stem usually takes a little extra time. As far as what else was put in here I'm not sure we're going to see any leftovers of anything else. Nothing else pops into my mind right now in terms of what else was applied down into here as, as the feeding. So the, yeah the corn cobs I guess go back a couple feedings and got snapped in half last time. The banana peel goes back one feeding. And here's the stem of the banana peel. And perhaps just some other stuff. Maybe, I'm not sure what that is, but it does resemble potato peel. So we've, um, we've excavated bin number two over here pretty nicely. Made plenty of room for us to apply today's feeding. Besides the besides those pieces of soiled paper towel and the used top covering 
paper bits that I was going to use as the foundation for today's feeding. I've also got my prepared bedding here on the side. Just a combination of shredded cardboard and paper and leaves. Dampened pretty thoroughly to make it nice and moist. And since, um, since these are either twin bins or sister bins or whatever I refer to them as, <laughs> they would have been managed very similarly to one another. So it wouldn't be too surprising for us to bump into a banana peel in here too. But there's really no need to go overboard trying to locate leftovers of the previous feeding. It's just sometimes you, you know, sometimes you just sort of bump into the previous things that had been fed. Other times you don't. Sometimes you can really go crazy trying to find something. I remember trying to track down half of a mango seed in my outdoor worm system. It went unfound for many feedings. Then when I finally found it, it seemed like such a joyous moment. <laughs> <laughs> the little things in life, right? So, let's start out with a little bit of my prepared bedding down here. A little sprinkle of that on the bottom. And then in can come a coffee filter for this one. As well as a coffee filter for this one. And then the, uh, the remaining stuff that we plan on reusing as bedding in the bins is the top covering bits of newspaper. All stuff that we're going to be replacing today. Nice fresh new top coatings. I would have probably sprinkled even more leafy matter out onto the top surface, but I ran out during my feeding yesterday and gave that stuff to the system systems that I was taking care of. So I'm out of leafy material for now. It's just a matter of heading outside and replenishing my storage box in which I keep this stuff. So now before we pile in the foods, the other things I had hoped to include beneath the yummy food was a couple of these soiled paper towels. All those little spots on there makes me kind of wonder if that might be some sort of a mold or a bacteria. It could very well be. And if it is, then the worms are going to love it because that's just one of the things that they really enjoy eating. These. These feeding zone indicators, on the other hand, we're going to set aside and use them at the very end when we top cover. Except they were a little bit damp, so the frozen stuff that I bought down here for the worms to eat is also starting to adhere to it. And I see I've got a couple soiled napkins here in addition to the paper towel, so let's make sure that all gets applied as well. So, we're going to do our best to apply this yummy assortment of delicious fruits evenly into both systems. There's not a whole lot of pear, so we'll see about making sure both bins are given a more or less equal portion. Not that it really makes much difference, but I, um, I just like to try to be consistent in my feedings, if for no other reason, just so we can kind of do a little bit of a compare and contrast between the two systems when we check in on them later and I think we're pretty much done the only thing remaining to do here is to cover up but you know what before we do I've also got my pulverized eggshell which I sometimes sprinkle in as grit with the feedings it just sort of helps the worms break down their foods and this being the 10th feeding it's very likely that I've already applied it a great number of times in previous feedings. I usually try to make a special um, effort to make sure that the younger of my bins are getting a sufficient quantity of grit applied with their feedings in the beginning and then later on I start to assume that the system probably has good bits of residual grit floating around within it if the worms need it. And then I don't worry so much about making sure that each check-in includes an application of grit but even now on feeding number 10 in these two systems that are now in excess of 100 days old I'm still thinking it might make good sense to be applying grit with their feedings 
I don't know, I've seen tests where people just run bins without ever applying any grit, and the worms do A-OK -okay without it. And even in my outdoor systems, it's a rare occasion that I apply grit, although I would assume that certain things just sort of end up in the system as grits on my compost barrel. Anything I might be picking up off the ground and throwing into the systems might be covered in a little bit of dirt or sand or something that might be gritty in nature and something that the worms can utilize for their digestion. Because that's the whole idea of the grid is to provide the worms with some tough minute particle materials that they can use in their gizzards to break down their foods. All right, very nice. These little guys are doing a great job breaking down the materials we've been giving them so far. Now I'm just going to make an attempt at leveling things off for the most part over here before we get to covering up. Feeding zone indicator it's almost unnecessary since I pretty much always feed down the middle in most of my systems with only just a few exceptions so figuring out where we last fed shouldn't be too tough even if we didn't have a feeding zone indicator but I just do it as a little bit of a tradition and it gives me a a way to do away with all my coffee filters gradually over time so you can see these worms look quite content in this system there's worms everywhere in all reaches of the bins exploring all angles up and down deep and low and up in the surface and out to all four corners of each bin so that's always kind of a good sign I think we did a pretty good job also kind of blending in the leafy material that we took off the top surface and that we excavated from down below. But it does seem like the majority of it ended up over here and got tilled in with this stuff. So there does seem to be a higher concentration of leafy matter blended into the edge that's closer to me. That's okay. I wonder if it'll just result in more worms coming over to hang out in these edges because of the leaves. Somehow to me it always seems like they really like the leaves. And... I wouldn't be too surprised if that's true, because leaves are pretty much right up the worm's alley. All right, everyone, I got a few things I got to take care of getting put away and cleaned up. But before we start into that, let's make sure we're not accidentally taking any worms away on our gloves. So I'll just do a quick, a quick scrub of the glove, re resulting in my clean hand now being soiled. <laughs> before we call it a day, but that is the end of the video and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye now. Oops. Almost forgot. <laughs> we had intended to drop in a couple of top covering pieces of newspaper. No worm chow this time, but just something I like to put out there as a place for the recirculating moisture under the plastic to land on so that the worms have a place to come up and enjoy it. All right, everyone, once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye now.